Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you how to install the Thermalright Frozen Prism 240 Black ARGB in our AMD AM5 system. This process is going to be exactly the same for AM4. If you're on that platform, there will be a separate video for Intel platforms, so if you want that, that will be linked in the video description. But to start with, make sure that you have your CPU installed into your motherboard and we're gonna to need to remove the stock AMD brackets and the two screws at the top and the bottom, so four screws in total. So let's go ahead first of all and remove that. Now we can remove the plastic brackets, put those somewhere safe just in case you need them at a later date. Next from our bag marked AMD, we're gonna take out our four pinky red spacers, the two brackets and the four bolts. You'll notice the brackets actually say AM4 on them, although depending on when you're watching this, they may have updated it to say AM5, but this works fine for AM4 or AM5. And when they're actually installed in the motherboard, they'll be in this orientation. So they'll be with the bolts being closer rather than being this way around with them being further apart. Okay, so next we can install our brackets. So put the plastic spacers on top of the four mounting holes. Then we can place the brackets over the top, again, with the screw thread being closer than further. So a sort of inverted horseshoe. Then we're gonna take our four bolts and screw these down until they reach the bottom. If you're doing this on a PC and it's actually in the vertical orientation, if you just do one up lightly, you can still move this around a little bit and it will actually hold the other pillar in place on the other side. Do up all four screws until they bottom out and you cannot turn them any further. When that's done, it should look a little something like this. The next part would be to identify on your motherboard the appropriate headers for your AIO pump and also your CPU fan header. If you can't quite see, sometimes a uh, flashlight or torch might be useful to see some of the smaller text on the board. You can see here, we've got two CPU fan headers, the lower two, and the one at the top is our AIO pump header. Let's go ahead and connect those up. Alternatively, you can use the included splitter, which has a four pin PWM star header on it. Plug this one into the one which is marked CPU fan, and then you can plug in the fans on your radiator into this connector. You must have one connected into the white header. That is the one which actually has the sense wires and the others just replicate the signal. If you've got the two fan version, the 240 mil, you only need to plug in two fans. If you've got the 360 mil version, you plug in all three. Alternatively, with the 240 mil version, you can plug in the AIO pump as well. This isn't entirely recommended, but you can use it in a pinch. At this point here, we've got our cables connected. So the pump header is plugged in to the CPU pump. And also we've got our other splitter box, which is plugged in here. And I've passed the cable through to the back so I can wire that up a little bit easier and make cable management a little bit more simpler. This cable here is going to the pump. We can cable manage this after once the pump is in its final position. At this point, we've got some choices to make depending on the orientation of the actual radiator. Now, if we take a look at the radiator, you'll notice that the fans are pre-installed. And on this model, the cables are coming out of this side. So it would make a lot of sense for us to make life easier and to install the radiator in this orientation with the pipes towards the front. This way we can then coil the pump head around and it should look quite nice. Alternatively, if you wish to swap that around and change it the other way, you will likely need to remove the fans from the radiator and turn them around 180 degrees in the rotation rather than the blade direction, just so the cables are actually at the back. The choice is entirely up to you. For simplicity for us here, I'm gonna be wiring it this way around just so we don't have to take the fans off again. My suggestion would be to take the cables from the back of the fans and pass them through the holes in the top of your case up here because it's gonna be a lot easier to cable manage them 
whilst they're passed through than it will be to try and get in there afterwards because there may not be enough clearance in here with the fans and radiator in the way. So I'm going to pass the cables through and then we can offer up the radiator and attach it to the top of the case. Obviously, if you're putting it in the front, the same things sort of apply. Just look at your clearances and where you can actually route your cables. When you've decided on a position for your radiator, you can install four screws in the corners just to get it started. I've only done three there, but it holds it in place. And then make sure you put in all the additional screws to hold it in. There should be a total of eight. Next, we need to install some thermal compound, which is an interface between the CPU pump block and your processor. This can sometimes be a little bit overthought. Generally speaking, if you want to go with the cake spread method and just put a little blob on the top and try and spread it thinly across the entire surface of your CPU, that generally works for me, but do whichever works for you. I've just put a blob on top of the CPU for now. This is only for demonstration purposes, but if you want to use a plastic spreader and spread it out. And also potentially if you're using an AMD system, especially AM5, it might be worth investing in a thermal paste guard. This doesn't improve performance at all, but it does prevent some of the thermal compound going down inside the unusual characteristics of the side of the CPU, which is actually a bit of a pain to clean. Entirely up to you, links are in the video description. I've just finished spreading my thermal paste across the CPU. Yours may look something like this. If you want to, if you want to be ultra secure and very careful and avoid any air pockets or anything like that, you can now put a small dot in the middle of the CPU to allow it to press out through the rest of the thermal paste. That's up to you. Generally, the cake method works best, in my opinion. Now to install the actual pump, make sure that you remove the plastic coating, which is on here. That is to protect the surface in transit and is a thermal insulator. So if you install this with the plastic piece attached, your temperatures will be absolutely horrible. What we want to do when we're ready is to match up these two sections here and here with the two standoff pillars on the brackets here and here. To get the pump head attached, just do a couple of turns to begin with, just to get it in place. And then you can do it step by step. So tighten it down methodically. So do the top one a couple of turns, then the bottom one, and just do it equally until it cannot be turned any further. When the screws have gone right down to the very end, and they're as tight as they can go, my suggestion would be to do one, two, just do two turns back. There is something about the mounting pressure with AM5 processors. So if you've got too much pressure actually on the CPU, you can get some odd behavior with the RAM or the system actually posted. So that is my suggestion, just back off the, uh, the tension just a little bit. If you find your system still won't boot after this, potentially you might have to loosen it off a little bit more depending what the tension's like on your particular motherboard. Now that this part's done, we can now take the addressable RGB cable for the pump head and pass that out through the back of your case. Okay, so excuse the mess, but lots of cable in here. So we should be left with two PWM style cables, connections. So these are for our two fans on the top. So those can plug in to our breakout box or splitter. Or alternatively, you can just connect those straight to your motherboard. The choice is entirely up to you. You can obviously cable manage that however you want to after. And then we should also have three addressable RGB cables, all of which can be daisy chained together. Or if you wanted to, you can actually buy a hub such as the thermal right one we've reviewed previously. Uh, that is an excellent choice for this sort of thing. Or you can daisy chain them and then just use the last one on the connection to plug into your motherboard. So in order to do that, work out which one's your longest one and have that one be the furthest one away. So that is gonna plug into our motherboard. We can then take the daisy chain and spur and match that up with our cable. And then we can use the last pin there, take our last cable, put that together. So those are all daisy chained nicely together and we only have one cable to plug into our motherboard, which for us, happily, 
is down the bottom here. So I want to go ahead and plug that in. As you can see on the bottom of our motherboard here, we've got a couple of connections there. So those are color coded in white. You've got a 12 volt RGB on one side and you've got a three pin, five volt addressable RGB on the other side. So just look for a header that says either J rainbow or ARGB or digital RGB. As long as it's got three pins on it, and there's a space in the middle, you should be absolutely fine. If there's any doubt, check your motherboard manual. When your cable's installed, it should look a little something like that. And there we go. Most of the cable management is done and it's installed and fired up and we've already got some really great temperatures and hopefully you will do too. If there's anything in this video which you've not fully understood or you need a little bit more help with, please feel free to reach out to us on the comment section below. More than welcome to do that. Or alternatively, for a faster response, head over to our Discord. Links for that will be in the video description. And you can ask your technical questions in the tech support channels, which are available free of charge for Discord members. So yeah, hope this video has been useful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and the channel notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.